This is one of the earlier episodes I recorded because um, I did this one in Dutch. So we're gonna do this one again in English. Requested by Music Fan 993 who wanted me to do a lot of uh, backtracking on bands, so we're gonna do that now. Uh, I, I believe this is episode 6, so there we are. Uh, this is the top 10 Who songs. I uh, really love the Who. Um, that is why it is episode 6. I've covered them really early, so there we are. Um, yeah, I basically love every Who record. Well, I'm not the biggest fan of the post Key Moon era with uh, face dances and It's Hard records like that, I believe. Those are the only two, so luckily. But yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the post-era stuff. Uh, yeah, but before that, with Keith Moon, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the last album he was on, uh, Who Are You? Not the biggest fan, but everything before that I think is great, and I, I hope everything from that is on there. So we're gonna see, and yeah, enjoy. I really hope that nothing from, um, from the 2000s records is on there. That album is really lackluster. It doesn't have any emotion on it. So I hope that isn't on there, but who knows. Let's see. The fuck is this? Two adverts on one video. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? YouTube just, just gave me two fucking ads on one video. YouTube, fuck you, fuck YouTube. Two adverts, are you fucking serious? You're billionaires. You don't, you don't have to show ads to me, fucking hell. You're rich, you're already fucking rich, so yeah. I'm, I'm getting really pissed, I'm gonna, yeah, not talk about YouTube anymore because it is a pretty bullshit site, but there we go. But still, it is the most popular, so... Don't get fooled we again. Our entries based on a combination of the artist's fan favorites and their most commercially successful songs. Um, how's this song called? Uh, M Eminence Front. Uh, from It's Heart. I said, I said in my predictions list, not anything from those two records and you pick something from their last one. It's hard. Well, the last one before um, John Antwist will die, rest in peace to him. Um, so yeah, not the biggest fan of this song. Well, it is a pretty good song, but the album itself is pretty mediocre. People forget. The Who's 1982 album It's Hard is not one of the band's favorites, but Eminence Front has continued to be part of the Who's live shows and with good reason. This Pete Townsend penned song is catchy, danceable, and funkier than most Who songs. Meanwhile, the lyrics, which are about drugs, wealth, and delusion, are a time capsule reminder of 1980s excesses. Did he, did he just spit? He just spit at his cross. Good job, Pete Townsend. Good job. Um, a quick one while it's wet. Oh, that is a great song. I love that. The lyrics are really messed up, but I love the song. Number nine, a quick one while he's away. You stop your crying. The nine minute A Quick One While He's Away is actually a mini opera and paved the way for the Who's 1969 rock opera, Tommy. We have a Roger Daltrey is jacked as fuck though, I've got to say that. No, my. Fucking hell. <laughs> Albert the Engine Driver. Do you re remember that? Uh, 
great song, but what the fuck with those lyrics? I'm an engine driver. It also contains Zark Townsend's most engaging writing. Never smile for an old engine driver. Uh, yeah, Pinball Wizards, classic. Number eight, Actually, um, P1000 hates this song because it is really simplistic and the main riff he finds really annoying. So I'm not sure why he invented that, but it is one of the most popular Who songs, so that is pretty ironic. The most popular song from the Who's Timeless Tommy. Tommy is such a great record. I've not reviewed it yet, but if you want me to, then let me know. Because I love do. Townsend was advised that the first version of Tommy was too relentless and needed something to lighten it up. And thus, this classic song was born. Piece from classical composer Henry Purcell influenced Townsend for the song's constant sense of motion and helped bring us this enduring classic. I believe Tommy was released in 69, so the golden age of music. Right. Who the fuck are you? Number seven, who are you? Yeah, not the biggest fan of the record, but the title track is pretty great. I have to say that. Released in 1978, Who Are You was inspired by an alcohol-induced episode in Townsend's life. A policeman did indeed, as the opening lyrics state, find the rock star drunk in a Soho doorway. Person can make art out of anything. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. The Who is in fine form here, making this late 70s cut as compelling and powerful as their formative 1960s classics. However, its parent album was the last recorded before drummer Keith Moon's death. I can see from all, sure. Number six, I can see from, from the Who sellouts. Great record. The Who's only top ten single in the United States, I can see from Miles, brilliantly demonstrates the band performing at their unified best. Who's fierce, intolerant drumming? Roger Daltrey's menacing vocals, Pete Townsend's ominous guitar, and John Entwistle's counterpoint bass come together with Townsend's amazing writing to create this masterpiece. Mm. Yeah. I can see from miles and miles. It's true, it's a familiar story of love betrayed, but it's given fresh, almost psychedelic life in this rendition. Love Rain Over Me, oh man. Get goosebumps every time I listen to that track. Love Rain Over Me. Yeah, easily the best track with Roger Daltrey on it. Such a classic. Roger Daltrey could be guilty of going overboard with his vocals, ah. but Love Rain Over Me is a. It's not, it's not overboard, I, I mean, just listen to his vocals, man. It is just the right pinch of emotion f for the song. It is so perfect. Fuck you with the overboard thing. Perfect example of the man knowing how to rock the emotions without getting excessive. Townsend's writing is perceptive and involving, and the band sounds great. But it's Daltrey who gives the song its heft, power, and impact. A true sterling piece of rock.
Tupac singing that demonstrates why Daltrey, at his peak, couldn't be beat. Uh, Number four, behind blue eyes. Well, for who's next? Yeah, I mean, I love the Who, but easily the best record. Enough said. One of the Who's most covered songs, 1971's Behind Blue Eyes, exemplifies Townsend's expertise. And incorporating different moods and tempos into one song. The sweet, sad melancholy of the opening ultimately turns angry and powerful before returning once again to quiet and lonely. Daltrey once more contributes a finely edged vocal performance that beautifully captures the song's yearning. Behind blue eyes. <laughs> Uh, my generation from the baby album. Three, my generation. The self titles. And my generation. Named Rolling Stone's 11th greatest rock and roll song of all time, my oh. generation captures the raw sense of youthful. Deservedly so. Than just about any other song. I hope I die before I get old has become a mantra for every youth culture. And the urgent propulsion of the song mirrors the explosive energy of rock, punk, rap, thrash, and just about the every line of modern music. I mean, it is a revolutionary song, but rap, really? Fuck off with Mojo. My favorite song by the Who, I won't get fooled again. I mean that that keyboard intro, the riffs, the the vocal deliveries by Roger Daltrey, the bass lines by John Entwistle. It is so perfect. It is such a perfect song. Number two, won't get fooled again. Cynicism has never sounded as good as it does on Won't Get Fooled Again, a powerful acknowledgement of lessons learned. Nothing really changes attitude of the lyrics is in stark contrast to the potent vigor of the music. And to the intense power of the performers. The passion may be full of anger, but it's definitely fueled by hope. Our number one pick, Love it, man. Easily the best song. Well, we all know what is gonna be number one, but Won't Get Fooled Again is number one in my heart. Yeah, that was really, really sappy, but there we are. Uh, the Real Me by Quadrofino. I Can Explain, uh, single. The kids are all, all right from my generation. Magic Bus from Magic Bus The Who on Tour. See Me Feel Me from uh, Tommy. Love the entire Tommy record by the way, amazing. But number one, you can guess it already. Number one, Baba O'Reilly. Townsend intended Baba O'Reilly to be a comment on the dangers of excess. Yet its teenage wasteland refrain became a celebratory rallying cry instead. Can you expect 
effect when you wrap the message in music that grabs the listener and won't let go. Baba O'Reilly is a masterpiece of great writing, soulful singing, and intense musicianship. You don't get more Just a classic. Just a classic. I, pr I prefer I won't get fooled again, but Bob O'Reilly is still a close second to me. But it can be number one. I don't care. They're all great. Yeah, that was the list. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Bob O'Reilly was number one. I, I didn't predict it, but I. I could see it coming, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your top 10 in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite albums, by the way. Uh, because I believe they have to, uh, 10 albums, so you can make your top 10. So uh, let's check out the comments for a bit. <coughs> top 10 Rage Against Machine song. Yeah, that is a good one. Uh, they, they have made a song, but or a song. They, they have made a list, but it isn't requested on the channel, so there we are. Uh, top 10 King song, yeah, that is a good one. Pretty underrated band. Uh, er uh, Aerosmith, no. Yeah, it is basically um, basically people asking, can you do this list? Can you do this list? Uh, instead, I'm just talking about this list, but they don't do that, so there we are. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your uh, favorite songs, favorite albums in the comments down below. And enjoy.